Do you want to kick ass in your 80s and beyond? Me too. So as a perpetual student of health and fitness who just turned 39, I've been reflecting on the 30 most impactful skills that I've learned in my 30s. So here they are and stick around for the end when I'll reveal the number one thing to do if you take nothing else away from this video. Fight the desire for comfort, sit less and move more. We've evolved from hunter-gatherers whose survival depended on movement into couch potatoes who can click a few buttons and get pizza to their door. So combat the pull of the couch and actively fight to get moving. Stand at your desk, take the stairs, or commute on foot or by bike just to get started. Make walking your daily routine. A 10 to 15 minute walk after every meal adds up and helps your digestion too. Add a weighted pack for some balance and coordination improvements while you're at it. In the kitchen, simplify your meals to five ingredients or less. You don't need complicated recipes, just a protein veggie, fruit or starch, and a healthy fat source. Learning how to cook a few simple things is fast and gives you immense control over your diet. And the outcome that it has on your physique and your health is profound. This will also help you limit processed foods. Don't deny yourself completely. That will just make you want them more. But shifting your go-to meals and snacks from processed to a five-ingredient approach will have a huge impact on how you look and feel. And of course, you should prioritize protein. Eating your body weight in pounds as grams of protein every day improves energy, builds muscle, reduces cravings, and increases your metabolism. My favorite hack is to get 40 to 50 grams for breakfast every morning by 10 a.m. It sounds like a lot, and it is, but it'll get your day off to an amazing start. A better day for me also includes spending a little time in nature to reduce my stress. Chronic stress is an enemy for physical as well as other aspects of our well being, but the answer lies just beyond that door over there. Spending time in nature is a proven method to lower cortisol levels, reduce heart rate, and alleviate feelings of anxiety. I recommend getting outdoors and falling in love with zone two cardio. That's low intensity steady state aerobic work like biking, jogging, and swimming. Want better recovery, more energy, and mental well-being? Dr. Peter Atia and a host of other health experts are all united on the benefits of this type of aerobic work. However, don't forget about the other key to longevity, which is learning how to build muscle. Did you know that muscle mass is linked to a decrease in all causes of disease? Muscle gives you function regardless of how you build it. More muscle equates to more functional strength, even if you use machines or build it through static postures. This is why my training programs like Persist focus on building muscle more than they do on losing weight. If you do one, the other becomes much easier and you'll have more functional strength for Life. Building muscle is much easier when you have a goal, like learning how to pick up heavy stuff safely, aka learn how to deadlift. This will help you in so many life situations that you'll encounter. Another excellent goal is to master the pull-up. Yes, I'm talking to you. Spend more time hanging for 10 to 15 seconds every time you pass a simple doorway pull-up bar. Once you can hang for 90 seconds to two minutes at a time, start working on your banded pull-ups, pull-up negatives, or pull-ups assisted on a machine at your gym. Grip strength and longevity are linked, so this simple skill pays off big. And and it's just badass to be able to do a pull-up. All right, pardon me while I take a quick break from the 30 tips for your 30s to give you bonus tip number 31, and that is getting enough electrolytes in your diet. I'm gonna pop a link down below for my favorite electrolyte supplement, which is Element, drinkelement.com. I've been taking this for the last three years, and I have to say this has been a huge upgrade to my health in my 30s. I never really prioritized electrolytes in the past, and when I started to, I started to see improvements in not only my performance, but my cognition. I make sure to take one packet a day, and it doesn't hurt that they taste amazing, they've got no sugar, and a scientifically backed blend of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. So go ahead and get yours down in the link below. My favorite flavor is citrus salt, and now let's get back to 30 tips on how to be healthier in your 30s. We haven't talked about sleep yet, but sleep consistency is key. This is when we maintain a regular sleep schedule, aiming for seven to nine hours of quality sleep each night. A tip is to set a bedtime alarm one hour before you wanna be in bed to start winding down. And don't forget about improving sleep quality too. Restful sleep 
has a much different impact than broken and light sleep. So make your room cold and dark, limit caffeine after noon, and don't eat a heavy meal or drink alcohol right before bed. Prioritize some device-free time. This can be better for sleep and for mental health too. To be honest, this is an area I need to work on much more, but it's worth it. Excessive screen time hurts our health and mental well-being. Invest in meaningful social connections. We thrive on social connections, impacting our overall well-being. Seek out those strong social ties that bring emotional support, better physical health, shared joy, personal growth, and a sense of belonging. Go deep and find those friends and relationships you can really lean on in hard times. The next category is little things that you can do throughout the day that add up a lot. And one is to spend more time on the floor. My good friend and a world-renowned mobility and strength specialist, Dr. Kelly Starrett, is a proponent of spending more time on the floor as part of a broader approach to movement, mobility, and overall health. Sitting on the floor more improves hip and ankle mobility as well as your posture. And while you're down there, extend your hips and mobilize. This will counteract shortened hip flexors from sitting in chairs, leading to pain, discomfort, and mechanical changes that are not optimal for your health. Try incorporating the couch stretch multiple times a week and the ATG split squat once a week as part of your lower body strength day. Learn how to do a full depth squat, ass to grass. Cultures who squat as part of their daily life have dramatically lower hip, knee, and low back pain for a reason. To build up to doing this, you can start elevating your heels and holding onto something until you reach a full pain-free range of motion. Little daily nutrition hacks that help a ton are filling your plate half full of fruits and veggies. That means we get a lot of food to tell our stomach faster that we're full without a ton of calories. More fruits and veggies also means we're eating more fiber, which is gonna help with digestion and that feeling of fullness. A few of my favorite fiber sources are frozen berries, pears, apples, avocados, oatmeal, flax and chia seeds, and green beans. And stop drinking your calories. They don't fill you up and make it easy to overconsume. Liquid calories bypass many of the mechanisms in the digestive system that signal to the brain that we're full. Watch out for alcohol, as well as calorie bomb drinks that are sugar-filled pre and post workout. You're better off eating your pre and post workout meals to ensure you get sustained nutrient release anyway. When you learn how to read a nutrition label correctly, you'll know exactly how many calories and added sugars there are in the things that you consume, as well as fiber content, protein, and other essential macro and micronutrient numbers. Make it a habit to double check the serving size. Sometimes these are designed specifically to trick you into thinking you're eating less than you actually are. The overall goal here is to not only manage a healthy weight and keep our energy high, but also to take care of our digestion. Our gut is our second brain, and it profoundly influences both our mental and physical health. Eating right isn't just for weight management. It's about optimizing the bond between our gut and well-being. Learn what foods you digest best and include probiotic-rich foods like yogurt and sauerkraut. Stay hydrated and eat mindfully for better digestion. Cultivate a hobby. Pursuing a hobby is a form of self-care, boosting your relaxation and mental rejuvenation. Engaging in hobbies releases dopamine, more pleasure and less stress. I've been golfing more, either alone or with my dad, and I love it. Speaking of reducing stress, I'm a money worrier. So learning the 50-30-20 rule has helped me balance my budget with structure, not emotion. Direct 50% of your income to essentials like rent, groceries, utilities, and transport, securing a stable life foundation. Then use 30% for non-essentials like dining out, vacations, and golf, or other leisures. This is going to enhance your life quality and joy. And lastly, save 20% for unforeseen expenses, future investments, and retirement, locking in financial security and peace of mind. You can also invest in your physical health when you switch your mindset to training, not exercising. Exercise is something that you do for immediate outcomes. Training takes thoughtful planning and dedicated execution to arrive at long-term goals. This is instant versus delayed gratification. If you're making daily movement and walking part of your lifestyle already, then training is when you intentionally build up your muscles 
muscle, your strength, and your aerobic capacity. Ideally with programs like Persist that build upon themselves week after week instead of throwing random workouts together. If you've had a hard time sticking with a program, you might need more variety within that structure. Mixing cardio and strength training is a great way to accomplish this. Different combinations of cardio and weights at different levels of intensity deliver well-rounded training that is extremely fun and engaging. The functional pump conditioning workouts in Persist are a perfect example. You might do a farmer carry, several calories on the bike, and some muscle building split squats or pull-ups all in the same conditioning piece. The time flies by and you've gotten a terrific working session in. Breathe right. Try nasal breathing during low intensity training and while you sleep. At night, I use mouth tape and a nose strip. Simple as that. Breathing impacts our health and well-being significantly. Nasal breathing, compared to mouth breathing, offers unique benefits that influence how we feel, function, and perceive our surroundings. Wellness isn't always found in complex routines. A simple practice like nasal breathing can transform the quality of your day dramatically. Another simple practice is to embrace the happiness equation and practice gratitude. Happiness can be defined as this. Happiness equals the perception of an event minus the expectation of an event. This equation emphasizes the role our expectations have in shaping our emotional response. By managing our expectations and cherishing simple moments with gratitude, we enhance our joy, and resilience, focusing on the valuable everyday experiences that define our lives. This one has been big for me over the last few years, especially as my life responsibilities have grown. Not feeling so happy? Then prioritize checking up on your mental health. As a fitness professional, I talk so much about physical health, but the mind impacts the body tremendously. While physical health checkups are common, mental health reviews often lag. Yet, just as we monitor our physical health, routine mental health evaluations can pre emptively safeguard our minds. It is extremely sad to me that the stereotype of the strong, fit person seldom emphasizes tending to your mental and emotional health as a positive. My life has been enriched by seeing a professional who offers a non-judgmental space for authentic self-expression and validation. Okay, great, Marcus. You've given a lot of great tips, but how do I know any of these are actually working? Well, you've got to know your numbers, understand and monitor your holistic health metrics. Now is the time to get proactive about your health. Regular health screenings, blood tests, and understanding vital metrics gives you insight into your overall well-being, guiding you how you might want to adjust your own lifestyle. I dialed in on these even further after reading Peter Atia's book, Outlive. Understanding and monitoring blood pressure, body composition, and getting some blood work done to look under the hood gives you a valuable and objective picture of your overall health. If you want to learn more about monitoring your health metrics, check out my biohacking resource guide that I'll link in the description below. If you take nothing else away from this video, I want you to know first First, that the small actions you take each and every day can have a massive impact on how you feel. This can happen as soon as today or even tomorrow, and also potentially add years to your life. But they only work when you do them consistently. So go ahead, choose any item on this list that you can find a bigger purpose in. And if you're looking for ways to add more joy and remove friction, then visit my website at functional-bodybuilding.com and use some of our resources on training and nutrition to help.